What's going on guys, it's Yuval here and welcome back to our channel. I hope you're having a wonderful day and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to create a cool cinematic look in DaVinci Resolve. It is going to be very simple, very easy to follow along, um, but at the same time I'm going to show you some very powerful techniques that you can apply on almost any grade that you're working on and hopefully you'll learn a lot from it and it can really help you step up your color grading game and create stunning beautiful grades that will make your clients happy that will make you happy um yeah so let's get going and also i almost forgot as always we have a pretty cool giveaway at the end of this video so make sure you stick around but now let's get on with the color grade okay so we're in davinci resolve and this is the footage that we're going to work on and um, keep in mind it's always very important to have some kind of a reference um, when you're working on something uh, personally i feel that it really helps me um, shape the direction that I want to take footage in and it just helps give inspiration and just gives you more clarity into what you actually want to achieve. Um, so for this one I have some references from a hockey um, commercial, it's a really beautiful one. So I'm going to name this first layer base and then I'm going to create a new node and for this one I'm going to call FPE which stands for Film Print Emulation and this is how I want to start uh, the workflow on this footage. I'm going to go into my LUTs and I'm going to go into Film Looks and let's choose one of these Film Emulation LUTs. Uh, they come free in DaVinci so you should have them as well. And I'm just going to go for the 60. Um, we can maybe change it later but I think this one would work. So I'll double click it then it's applied and you can see right off the bat um, it looks cool but um, something is off it's a little bit dark it's desaturated um, so we have some work to do so going back to the base layer uh, we're just going to uh, maybe raise up our overall exposure a little bit i'm just looking at the scopes over here um, we can bring down the blacks and then I want to go back into the film print emulation node and just crank up the saturation. That's looking pretty nice. Um, but now there are some colors that have too much saturation. Um, and also I just want to take everything into this more dark blue um, cinematic look. So going back to the base node again, I'm just going to mess with the um, temperature. I'm going to cool things off quite a bit and then maybe even give it like a little bit of a green tint. All right, then I'm going to create a new node and this one is going to be um, a skull primaries. And now let's take down the exposure um, and a lot of the gain. And then I want to go on into controlling individual use. Um, so I'm going to use the HSL uh, functions. We're going to start with U versus U. And you can see we don't have too many colors now. Um, we have mostly blues and there's also this red um, on his outfit. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to select it using the qualifier. And you can see it's automatically creating a point for me on this curve. And let's play with that. I think I want it somewhere around here. Um, and then going into luminance, just want to take it down. So that looks pretty good. I think maybe we went a little bit too far. And I want to bring back some of the exposure. And I also want to bring in some contrasts. So I'm going to go into my curves and I'm just going to create this S curve. So that looks pretty nice. And what I also really want to do is um, concentrate the light and I'll focus on the character um, on this guy. So I'm going to create a new node and then I'm going to go um, into the windows and I'm going to create a power window, feather it out. 
Um, then I'm going to, in the curves, kind of pull it down. And you can see that it's darkening our guy instead of the background. So we just need to go back into the window section and just invert. And then I want to track the window so it stays um, with our guy as the clip uh, kind of goes on. So I'm going to go into the tracker, press play. And now we have the window tracked. Let's call this one vignette. And let's see a quick uh, before and after into everything we've done so far. Um, that was the log version. And this is the grade. And we've come a long way in a, just a few minutes. Um, so sometimes you don't need a lot um, to get in the ballpark. And of course you can um, really massage everything and work on this for hours essentially. I'm just tweaking little things, but you can get results um, pretty quickly as you can see. So um, I think maybe this is looking a bit too saturated and I wanna change um, some of the blue colors as well. So going back into the primaries, I'm going to go into U versus U again. I'm going to select the blue tones and let's see where we want to take them. Something like that maybe, um, not a huge difference, um, but just it's the little details. And then going into U versus saturation, I think I'm gonna take all of these blues down. Maybe somewhere around there. And then on a new node, we can just add some grain just to give uh, the footage a little bit more texture and some more life and details. So let's go into film grain. I'm going to go for 16 millimeter um, 500T. And I'm not going to go too overboard with the grain. Um, I'm not sure if you can see this on YouTube, so I'm just going to exaggerate this um, just a bit. So that's without the grain. And there we go. Um, the grain just uh, is pretty subtle, but just adds um, a little bit of details. It gives some texture and a little bit more um, of a character to the image, essentially. Um, so I pretty much almost always add grain. Um, sometimes it's very little and sometimes I go more extreme if I want a stronger look. What we could also do now is try to separate the skin and maybe um, separate our character just a bit. So on my primaries node, I'm going to create a parallel node and I'm going to try and select the skin. So let's go for qualifier and also select uh, this highlight feature and let's select the skin that looks pretty good let's try and play with the sliders so you can see now that we've selected the skin but we also have um, some things in the background that are also selected um, that's fine we're just going to create a window on the face and then we're going to quickly track it. And now we have the face selected. Um, this is not a perfect selection, um, but if you spend some more time, um, depending on your uh, situation, you could get this more accurate, but this is fine for this tutorial. So I'm just going to uh, move on. So let's have a look at what we can do here. So uh, first of all, let's see what we get if we just add a little bit of a uh, red tint that kind of brings him alive but it's a little bit too much so I do want to keep the skin quite desaturated that's a little bit better we got rid of all of this blue uh, looking tint but then this is maybe a little bit saturated for me so let's see what happens if we kind of bring it down so I do like it but it's maybe a bit much um, like it's not blending too well so what I'm going to do is go into uh, my key and I'm just going to get the key output down um, and kind of 
see where I want this to sit. So um, that's like too pale. He's looking very bluish. I don't really like that. Then full power, um, it's a bit much. It's not blending well. So I'm going to bring this down until it looks good. Let's call this layer skin. And this technique you can do on pretty much any footage, essentially. Um, in this case, we didn't need much um, because it already looked quite okay. But this can be applied to almost any other footage that you have. And it can really make a big difference um, in some other um, scenarios. And just as a last touch, um, this is something that could really um, separate your grades from looking um, like an amateur uh, made them into more of a professional look and that is basically keeping the blacks clean and on this grade I do want to have um, some blue tint in the shadows because it works here quite well um, but I just want to get the darkest darks clean that's the key point here um, so let's create a new parallel node here using alt p and let's call it the blacks and we can see it with our eyes, but also, of course, when you look at the scopes, um, you can see that the reds are really down here in the shadows. And that means we have a lot of blues in the... Um, so let's zoom in. It's, it's mostly in here on his outfit. So I'm going to go into the log wheels and I'm going to push in the opposite direction. So I'm going to go um, into the orange, um, red, magenta kind of place so you could see how that really cleaned up the shadows but it's affecting um, them too much i don't want it to be applied on the whole spectrum um, of the shadows i just want it to be um, on the darkest darks so the way i'm going to do that is i'm going to go essentially into my low range and you can see if it's down to zero it's not affecting any of the shadows and when I pull it back up, it's slowly starting to affect um, the darkest shadows. And as I pull this up, um, as the numbers go bigger, it's affecting more of the shadows. So I just want it to be on the very, very darkest of shadows. Um, and I also can see that my shadows are a bit lifted and I just want them to sit right on that um, zero point on the vector scope. So I'm going to bring that down. maybe something like that so before and after you can see how that really made the blacks deeper and now they also look cleaner they don't have that blue tint and um, they're a little bit crushed now so i think i'm going to take off this back using the key yeah maybe something like that and you can really see if you look at the shirt here look how it brought back all of this detail over here um, that's looking much better and this is a step that is uh, very crucial. Again, it can really separate your grade um, from looking amateurish to looking great. Um, it's just a small step, but just always make sure that your blacks are clean and that they're sitting on the right spot um, on the vector scope. And that can really transform your grade and really take it to that next step, that next level. Um, but that is all for this grade, I think. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And we could make a quick recap. So we started um, essentially with this log version. Then we applied the film print emulation. And that instantly gave us some kind of a look to the image. And then with the base layer, we kind of balanced things out. And we also injected a lot of um, blues into the shot just to give it that um, ice cinematic look. Then we used some primaries, so that made quite a difference. Then we separated the skin and we added some grain and the vignette. And then we also controlled the blacks. So all in all, not a very complicated grade. Um, we don't have that many nodes. It's pretty simple. It didn't take us um, that long. And I think that's uh, a sign of a good grade. If it looks good and it was simple to make, um, that's really the best. 
And uh, yeah, I think it's looking great and we're pretty much done. So that is all for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and learned some new techniques um, that could hopefully help you improve your color grading and really um, take it to the next level. And if you like this video, please give it a like. It really helps out a lot. And also consider subscribing to never miss another one of these videos. And as for the giveaway, three of you guys could win three Artlist t-shirts or hats you can choose. All you have to do is let us know down in the comments below. Um, what video would you like for us to make next? Here is the winner from our last video's giveaway. Congratulations to you, my friend. And until the next time, stay creative and have a wonderful week.